Hi, this is Damon Stevens. Uh, this is your three steps to making more money. Three steps to more profit and 30 minutes is all it's gonna take. Uh, we're hoping this training will be beneficial for you. Uh, if you're either new to trading or you're looking for new ideas. Um, also, don't forget, uh, we have a free book. Uh, my number one secrets to stock trading is available from our website as well through uh, once you register. Um, this is the tra free training video you received. We have other training videos online that goes into a lot more detail. This again will be an overview, but hopefully give uh, anybody who's new uh, some ideas as far as how to get started. Uh, also, our members have live trading available online for 30 minutes every day uh, where we trade uh, stocks live. Um, and so hopefully you take advantage of that and find success there. So uh, this uh, is your, gonna be your shortcut to stock market trading. Um, we have a little disclaimer here we have to go over. Uh, basically the content of this website and this presentation are for information purposes only. Uh, Finn Wealth Builders and its associates are not trained or licensed uh, financial advisors. Uh, the content companies and stock examples uh, are not endorsed or considered recommendations. Any use of this content the webs of, on the website or this presentation is solely responsible for the viewer. No claims or guarantees are implied. Please trade responsibly. So uh, going through these, uh, this training that should give you three moves. Um, th these moves should allow you to first take control of your money uh, if in the stock market by knowing how to find the most effective stocks to profit from. Second, it's gonna help you to remove the dependency on someone else who's probably charging you high fees like um, I experienced or telling you what stocks to buy or limiting how much money uh, you can make because you're not investing in the right stocks. And then three, uh, knowing when to get into stock and when to sell the stock to lock in your profit. Uh, so the first uh, item is prospect. So we're gonna talk about prospecting first and just wanna show you uh, one testimonials from one of our members. Hey Damon, I wanted to thank you for getting me back to the stock market, the tools and knowledge and the understanding how to use that, that knowledge has made me a profitable trader. I uh, look forward to getting on the stock market calls every day and uh, learning more every day. I really appreciate it. So the first step in finding your prospects or, or the companies that you want to profit from uh, really just comes down to, um, you know, looking for, you know, three different items. One, the first item is, you know, your prospects uh, could be your favorite company. A lot of people, you know, have asked me, hey, well, I don't know where to start. I don't know what company to look at or what company stock to buy. Uh, and really, you know, you could just trade one company over and over again. Uh, and it could be your favorite company, whether it's a product you use every day, uh, like the breakfast cereal you use, uh, like Kellogg's. It could be, you know, Tesla. It could be Microsoft. It could be Apple. It could be uh, Dell, it could be any other type of, uh, and I know I've been talking about technology, but it could be oil, it could be anything, uh, any company that you use, um, you can leverage their stock. Uh, so you don't have to search far. Uh, also, the other thing that members will sometimes ask is, hey, how do I learn Forex or how do I learn Bitcoin or how do I learn? And really, the techniques you're going to learn here can apply to any stock uh, any, anywhere. Uh, and so that's the thing to keep in mind is you don't have to chase everything just find a group of companies that you're able to focus on or find new companies every day through scanners, which we'll talk about, which is the second item on here is looking through scanning tools. And we'll give you a, an example of that uh, in here shortly, uh, or um, just trade with us. Uh, just remember, if you're gonna trade with us, we're just doing our daily trades. Uh, we're not asking or recommending you to, to take what we're trading or trading at what the levels we are. Uh, but just, you know, it's an example. So you can trade on your own. You can look at what we're doing and see if that makes sense to you. Uh, just make sure that when you're uh, trading that uh, it's your trading uh, and you're not doing something because we tell you to do, you think we're telling you to do it or um, that we're recommending it because uh, we can't do that because uh, we're not licensed uh, broker. So we can't do that. Uh, and there's most more methods that we'll cover uh, online. We just can't cover here. I mean, I could speak hours uh, to uh, the training methods and techniques that you can use in trading. Um, so we're just gonna give you a little bit of uh, flavor of it uh, today. So in prospecting, uh, this is a, a screener. Uh, there are free screeners out there. Um, when, when you join our, 
online membership will give you quite a few different ones you can use. Uh, this is one that, uh, that I, I use um, in the morning and uh, it gives me an idea as far as you know what stocks are moving in the right direction um, that I'd be interested in looking at trading or possibly trading. Um, and then it also gives you some great charts to look at. You know, one of the things, um, if you're new to trading, you may have never used charts or you look at a chart and go, oh my goodness, it's confusing. I don't understand it. Uh, we'll help you to start understanding charts. And, there, and we'll give you also the reason why it's important to understand charting. Um, and even if you just have it at a high level, it'll just make you a better trader and make sure that at least it, even if you're letting somebody else do all your trading for you, uh, if you're using somebody to manage your 401k or your, or your IRA or your stocks, at least you can look and see if they're doing the right thing with your money at a minimum. Um, but the more you get into this, the easier it gets. It's like anything that's new. It's like learning how to drive a car. At first, it's very difficult, but after a while, uh, it's, it, you can do it automatically almost in your sleep, but don't sleep and drive. Um, that's not a recommendation. I'm just telling you that it, it does get easier as you trade and use the tools. And so let me give you an example. So this is the, this is the, uh, one of the charts uh, in the, uh, the scanning software that we use, um, also the charting software. And this is uh, the company um, play or Dave and Buster's entertainment. And, you know, really the reason that we try to teach charting and make sure you understand you know, when you're looking at for a good company, you know, what makes a good company? And uh, this chart should be pretty obvious. Obviously, you want to be able to buy in a company that's going up, right, in price so that you're buying low and you're able to sell sometime in the future high. And so if you look at Dave and Buster's, and this is just since October uh, of the last year, and you can see that the stock, you know, was around, you know, maybe around $17, $18. And it's just con consistently gone up. Um, over this last, uh, this last several months. And uh, so, you know, that's what you're wanting to look for in a trend. Um, you can see that you've gone from $18 to almost $50 now. Uh, and so that's what you want to find out. And that's why charts are important because you can look at it and at a glance you go, okay, I think this is a good company. They've continued to go up. Uh, they haven't, uh, if they've come down a little bit, it's only slightly, um, but they're in a good upward trend. Um, we call that a trend uh, when they're going uh, either up or down or sideways. Um, but on a good upward trend. And so this is definitely a good company to look at uh, or consider, you know, if I was looking at this personally, because I'd be like, okay, yeah, it looks like it's trading in the right direction. So maybe that's one that I'd want to take advantage of. Uh, so here's a, another example of a company that's done very well over time, which is Tesla. And looking at their chart, the thing that I wanted to help you identify is even though companies can look very strong and go up, at some point uh, they may plateau like Tesla did, and you can see that on this with this line here that I've created to show you kind of where they kind of plateaued. And then also they can kind of dip down. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this is, you know, Tesla used to be down around $100 a share, uh, and they peaked out at $900 a share, almost just under $900. Um, and, you know, if you're not looking at charts, if you're not understanding how you're investing and you're just going out and just buying a stock blindly without even looking at it, um, you could be overpaying for it. And for me, you know, part of my stock trading is I look for bargains. I look for stocks uh, that are not at the peak, um, that I have room to, to grow and, and to enjoy the profits, more profits, because uh, the, the larger they get, sometimes they slow down. And a lot of times they'll come back and reset a little bit. That's what Tesla's doing right now. You can see they almost hit 900 and they're almost back down uh, as of this video. They're down to almost $600 and they could be going lower. And uh, so that's your you know, I don't want to buy at 900 when I can buy at 600. And so uh, just to give you a few examples as far as why charting is important, why it's great just to look at it to kind of see, hey, you know, if I see Tesla going down like this, I'm probably going to wait to enter if I'm a new trader until it, it bottoms out. If I'm really interested in Tesla, I'm not going to go ahead and buy it at 900 or, or wait for it to, to somehow continue to buy it at 618 and not know that it's going to go down to maybe 400 or 500. I don't know if it'll do that, but I mean, I'm just showing that as an example. Um, but that's where charting is really important uh, to understand. Uh, so here's, a, here's an extreme example, UVXY. So, and here's the reason why, you know, I say, hey, look at bargains, uh, at least if you're new to trading, make sure you understand at least the dip so that you can either take advantage of that or if you don't care, I mean, I guess you can just buy it at the peak, but as you can see here with UVXY, you know, it is on an upward trend 
hit, you know, somewhere around this $90 range and it came from $90 back down to $6, almost $6. And then you can see that it had a little jump here, um, you know, back in February and it went clear back up to uh, about $135, $136 uh, really quick. And so if you thought, hey, great, you know what? It looks like it's growing. Let me go ahead and buy it at $136. Well, shortly thereafter, you know, within a couple of weeks, you know, it started dropping back off again and we're back down to $6. So do you want to buy stock at $140 or do you want to buy it at $6 and drive it up to $140? And so that's the reason why charting is important uh, if you're getting into investing, just so you can at least see, hey, am I getting a good deal on this? Am I getting in the right time or am I getting on uh, when it's coming down? And that's definitely what you don't want to do is get it at the wrong time. And so that's why this is important when you're prospecting and looking for, hey, what company am I willing to invest in? So here's another example. I just want to throw this out, you know, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about this chart because, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I get asked is, you know, hey, um, you know, I'm on a good stock. I've seen it training up a chart, but hey, it's up too far. You know, am I ever going to be able to buy this stock? And so the reason I put uh, uh, this, uh, this chart up here for MOV, uh, Movado Group, is so you can see that there are times where stock's gonna take a little bit of a dip. So you can see kind of where it, it dipped right here. And then, it, and then it came up and it dipped again, and it came up to another high and it came in and dipped, came back up high again and dipped. And so you can see that periodically there's times where the stock's going to come back and the price is going to reduce. And, and we call that buying the dip or uh, basically buying it when it when it's on sale. And so there are opportunities um, to buy stocks uh, when they're on sale. So if you love this this stock and you said, hey, I, I think I missed the move, um, but it's trending well, um, you know, you could always just wait for it to dip down and take a little bit of a dip. And when it starts to move back up, uh, that would be your time to get in. Uh, and so you can still get in on stocks that you've missed. Just make sure that they've completed their dip before you get in. Um, otherwise, you know, you don't know where that's going to stop. And so I just want to share a couple examples of how that works. And hopefully that'll help you in your trading um, just to keep you on the safer side and really to maximize your profits. So you're not buying at, you don't want to buy here at the, at the peaks when it's on a downward trend. You want to wait till it comes back down and build right it back up. And, and, and hopefully if you get on this trend, you can just continue riding up north and, and continue to, to book profits. Um, and so I uh, just wanted to share that example with you. Hopefully that helps you uh, to kind of understand what the opportunities are. So uh, once you find the company or companies that you want to invest in, um, you know, we talked about charting, how important that is. And, uh, but, you know, one of the things that we cover in our online training that I won't get into a lot of detail here um, is, you know, you want to determine how long you want to invest the prospect. You know, if you're a day trader or a swing trader, um, you may be into just saying, hey, I just want to catch the, you know, the ride up to peak and then get out. And I don't want to hold it for a day. I don't want to hold it for more than a week. Um, or, you know, I'm going to hold this for a year if you're more of a long-term trader. Um, you know, you might even hold it longer if it continues to trend upwards uh, or it's hitting it going towards your target. Uh, if you say, hey, I, I think Tesla's, you know, going to go from 600 back up to 1200 over the next three years or whatever, you know, your, your analysis tells you or whatever your thoughts are, then, then you know, at least gives you the opportunity to, to plan for it, continue to watch the charts along the way, periodically just to say, hey, is it still going the direction I want or not? Um, the other thing that we cover online um, that we're not getting into detail here is um, stock chart indicators. Um, a lot of times if you get in a trade, you might say, hey, I, I just want something that confirms, you know, am I in the right trade? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, is, it, is it about to change direction? And we cover that in our online training uh, and we continue to provide you know, ongoing training for you so that you can continue to become more familiar and, and uh, you know, have confirmation or at least have some type of indicator that tells you, hey, I, I, I'm in a good trade and it's going the right direction. And then also you know, the thing that uh, we wanna do with charts as well is to be able to help you identify when you've hit the top. I like the example we showed in Tesla it showed, you know, it, it was at the top and it flattened out and then it started going, um, you know, south. It started going down. So um, you want to be able to make sure you understand that so you can either get out and lock your profits in uh, or if you're familiar with shorting, uh, then you can, uh, you know, short the stock and be able to, you know, take advantage of, of the downside of stock 
uh, and then catch both sides, the upside and the downside. Uh, we cover that in our online training, um, but, uh, but it definitely gives you some additional advantages. So the next thing uh, that we want to talk about from uh, so now that you've prospected, we want to go in to talk about the purchase pro process. Um, and uh, so that's our next section here. Hi there. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that if you have any questions about stocks or investments, that Damon would definitely be one that you'd want to talk to. I've known him for a long time and I've worked through some different investments and options with him. And I find that his knowledge is very sound and he has some really good ideas. So if you know of anybody or you need some help yourself, I would definitely go talk to Damon. about stocks or investments, that Damon would definitely be one that you want to talk to. I've known him for a long time, and I worked through some different investments and options with him, and I find that his knowledge is very sound, and he has some really good ideas. So if you know anybody or you need some help yourself, I would definitely go talk to Damon. So the second step is placing your trade uh, or the purchase uh, with your prospects. You know, if you, uh, if you have a 401k or an IRA broker, um, you know, you can't open a new account, a cash account is what they call it, um, to start your investment uh, career. So a lot of people, uh, new members might come and say, hey, you know, I have a 401k, but, you know, I want to do additional stock trading with cash or with additional money, you know, how do I do that? And if you already have a, um, a stock broker that you use, uh, you can very easily just use them. So you don't have to open up, you know, you don't have to go searching around to try to find somebody um, or a broker that you can use. You can just use the one that you have. Um, but, you know, it depends on the type of trading you're doing as well. And you'll hear uh, as you're in our member group, that, you know, different people have different products that they use and they like, and there's pros and cons to each. Um, I haven't found one that I think is absolutely perfect. There's trade-offs. Some, are, some operate, uh, work faster, some work better, some have better charting. Uh, so it just kind of is a personal preference that you learn over time, um, but don't try to over overcomplicate it. Definitely, you know, try to use what you have already. If you don't, then, uh, you, know, you know, ask other members or, or we'll share a couple examples here with you to uh, get, get you started. The other thing to, to keep in mind too, is if your accounts are 2000, uh, you're, you're pretty restricted in a lot of the trading you can do. Sometimes you only do a couple of trades a week. If you trade too often, uh, then they'll flag you and they'll um, create delays in, in the amount or how long you can before you can trade again. So uh, don't get into uh, shares where you are considered a day trader and all of a sudden you're locked in and you can't sell your stock uh, and you need to get out um, or you're trying to buy stock because you find a great deal and you can't get in. So um, just keep in mind if you're under 2000, um, definitely make sure that you're, when you're buying the stocks that you, you've done your homework, that you know you're getting in the right time, that you feel like you're comfortable holding it for longer um, and before you get out. And, uh, you know, again, but if you're ever in something that you feel like you shouldn't be in, definitely get out of it. Um, if you're over $2,000, you have more flexibility uh, with the stock brokers. And then if you're over $25,000, it gives you the most freedom. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of additional options and, and trades. Uh, that you can't if you have a smaller account. And so you might say, hey, well, I want to be at the 25,000. Well, of course, if you're starting out, you know, you got to work your way to, to that 25,000 mark. But once you get there, uh, then, you know, by then you'll have more skills, uh, you'll have more knowledge, um, you'll be a better trader, a uh, safer trader. And uh, that $25,000, um, you can definitely start to leverage that um, to your advantage. Uh, the other thing too is when you're placing a trade, and we'll, you know, you'll get into this more if you get into our online training and into our uh, online groups. Um, but you know, set a buy where you want to get into a stock. Um, don't chase a stock if it's moving and it misses your buy point where you want to get in. Say it's, uh, you know, we want to get in at ten and it keeps moving to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And you say, hey, do I jump in? Do I jump in? You know make sure that you either wait and say, hey, I'm gonna wait for it to come back and dip back down, or you go ahead and, uh, and you make sure that you, when you're buying that you're comfortable where you're buying at. And there's another thing called a stop loss limit. Um, all the, the stock brokers that you, you sign up with, they can show you this. Um, we also have this in our online training, uh, but it says stop loss limits. Uh, and uh, this mitigates your loss and locks in your profit. 
you know, one of the, the, the worst things I've seen traders do, and, you know, I've had this, I've done this before too. Um, you know, when I was starting out trading, I never, I didn't even know what a stop limit loss was. And so I never set them and, you know, I'd get into a stock and it's going great. You know, it's, it's up, you know, $10 a share. And then all of a sudden it starts to turn down. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just wait. And it goes, and it comes back down $10 a share. And then it comes down $15 a share, and then down $20. And I'm like, oh, I lost almost half my money. Uh, what do I do? And I really didn't understand that I could have put a stop, stop limit to say, hey, if it comes down to where my entry price was, get me out. Or hey, if I if my uh, hey if it gets me out, you know, I want to keep two dollars of my profits or five dollars of my profits. Um, you can set a limit in there that'll sit out there and protect you from from you know losing money if all of a sudden the market tanks. Uh, or your stock tanks and you're like, gosh, you know, I'm working. I don't have time to, to watch it. Well, a stop limit loss lets you watch your stock and control your stock while you're not able to pay attention to what's going on with it. So um, definitely very important uh, to set stop limits and know when you want to get out, uh, whether it's up on, on the upside, you know, when you want to book your profits or on the downside, how do I protect my profits or even protect just your entry price of your of your capital because if you lose all your money you you, you can't uh, you can't trade anything um, but you know if you keep your profits you know then you're able to, to continue to trade and trade more um, so the idea is is lose very little because you're not going to have all winning trades uh, so that's why the lot the loss limits uh, important um, but you know make, make sure you're, you're uh, protecting your your uh, your base you know, base dollar amount that you're starting with and also, you know, profits along the way. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can set a sell price um, if you want to. Um, we cover that more in the training, detail training, but um, you can set a sell, sell price down the road. If you know that, hey, I know I only want to go till $15. And I'm going to sell this. I bought it at 10, I want it at 15, I want to get out. I just want to book some profit and then I'll look at it again. Uh, so you can do that as well. And uh, all the brokers, they have different tools or different ways that they do that. Um, but definitely, regardless who you go with, make sure you understand how they use it in their system and make sure that you're leveraging those um, so that you can protect yourself, keep those profits, keep your account growing. Um, and then that way you'll stay in this long-term and see the long-term benefits of stock trading. So, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, stockbrokers, uh, you know, where do you start? Um, so, you know, some of the ones that uh, there's, there's so many of them out there. I, I couldn't make a, a list of all of them here, but I just gave you a couple of, and I'm not recommending these, but to just give you a few, Robinhood's real popular, especially with um, a lot of the uh, new traders um, over this last year, a lot of them are using Robinhood. Uh, Webull's another one, Trading Station or TD Ameritrade. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of them out there, um, but you know, the ones that, that, that I'm familiar with, you know, I've used Fidelity. That's where I started, you know, a long time ago. Um, a TD Ameritrade is one I've used. Robinhood I have as well. A Webull, I, I, I really like the way that Webull does their charting. It makes it so easy for new traders. So it just kind of depends. And they all have different fees, which is the next thing. You know, what, do you, what, do you, what should you ask a stockbroker before you sign up? And one thing is to look at their annual fee. Do they charge an annual fee? Uh, most of them are not charging annual fees anymore. Um, do they charge you to, for each trade? Uh, and so if you're just trading stocks, most of them aren't charging you a, a trading fee either. And so uh, that's really important because that adds up. You know, if you're a, you become a day trader or, or a swing trader, you're going to be trading more often. And if you're trading and you're paying fees on every single trade, all of a sudden that's eating into your profits. And you say, hey, man, I'm up on these stocks, but I'm not making any money. And it might be because you have all your fees coming out and it's going to the broker and the broker's making the money off of you uh, instead of you making the profit. So just keep that in mind and make sure you ask those questions. Um, and then how much does each stock option trade cost? Uh, and so when you get into stock and you move to stock options, which is another thing, uh, stock options, they, um, they have, they have a, a more cost to them. And, and I don't know anybody who really is not, is doing that for free. Everybody's charging a fee for that. So just know if you move from stocks to doing stock options, which is a whole different type of strategy, um, that you keep that in mind because um, those costs are a lot higher. So you have to really know that you're going to be profitable before you start jumping into that. And then down the road, or if you've grown your account over $25,000, 
um, there's a, a thing called a margin account. And basically um, you wanna understand, you know, do they offer the margin accounts? What is the level? Usually it's 25,000 and what the interest rate is. And basically a margin account, if you're shorting stock or you're, you're buying stock, you know, to come down from a high, you're gonna use margin instead of cash on a cash account. So uh, you're gonna be using basically a temporary loan uh, and there's interest for every day that you hold that stock. So you have to keep that in mind, you know, when you're doing that, because that's again, a cost that comes out of your profits. And so you wanna make sure that you're not holding something long-term on a margin account to where it costs you money. The other thing that's dangerous about a margin account, which I don't recommend new traders to ever have a margin account is your account can go lower than what you have in your account. So if you have $25,000 in, you open a margin account, it gives you maybe $75,000 that you can trade on now. Uh, if you buy $75,000 in stock and that stock starts to drop down drastically and it drops below your $25,000, you're on the hook for that money. So your stock, you, all of a sudden your account, you look at it and you go, gosh, I had 25,000 in when I bought the stock, it went south on me. I didn't get out because I didn't have a stop loss. And so it kept going south and gosh, I'm, I'm not, I'm like down now to where, you know, I'm negative, you know, $30,000 on my account. You know, how does that, how's that possible? Well, it's because you took a loan. And, uh, and the thing with the uh, margin accounts, when you start to go down below your cash value or down below where if you start at 25,000, once you go below $25,000 where you're zero, uh, they call it, it's a margin call. And they're going to ask you to put more money in your account or sell your positions so that you're back to a positive amount in your account. So, um, you know, not gonna go into more detail on that here, um, but margin accounts, uh, just if you're new to trading, please stay away from them. They are so dangerous. Uh, you know, they, I, they can get traders and, I, and I, I, can, I can tell you some really bad stories of things that have happened to people who use margin accounts. So just stay away from them. If you have them, I use margin. I use it all the time. Uh, when I know I've got a good stock, I really, I use leverage margin and it is, a huge benefit, but only if you know what you're doing. So just uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but hopefully this helps you at least to know what questions to ask your stockbroker when you're starting out so that you understand what they're offering, what it, what the costs are, and make sure you consider that into your profits. You know, when you're, when you're looking at how you're going to profit on stocks, make sure that you take into account all the fees that may be related to it. And if there's no fees to it, then great. You know, trade successfully and you get to keep all those profits for yourself without having to pay a lot of fees to somebody else. Okay, so now we're getting to the profit section. This is the third, the third bullet. So we've talked about prospects, we've talked about the purchase process, now we're gonna talk about profits. Hi, this is Dr. Carney, and I'm gonna tell you something that I want you to write down. If you want a 2X, 5X, or 10X your income or your stock options, you need to talk to one man and one man only, and that is Damon Stevens. He's going to help make you more money, and that means he's going to give you the 6X word, profit. If you want to profit from your stocks, Damon Stevens is your man. Okay, so I'm gonna only share three patterns. There are so many patterns, so many indicators that I can share with you, but I can't do it here. Uh, so hopefully you become a member and you're able to, to continue to learn more techniques you can use. And really what you'll find is there's uh, over a hundred or more types of traders out there, you know, and techniques that they use to trade. And, you know, one person will say, this only works and none other work. Well. It's true, it might be for them that that technique or that strategy only works for them because that's they're successful with it. Um, but you don't have to be a trader like everybody else. So if somebody tells you, you can't make money doing this, this technique, but you can do in this technique, just keep in mind that stocks are like, you know, your favorite candy or your favorite food. You know, you're gonna brag about the one that works for you that you like and enjoy. And you're not gonna talk about the food that you don't like or the things that you don't enjoy. And so I'm gonna share three patterns of, to profit with you. Um, and hopefully this will help you with your trading. Uh, again, uh, if you're new to trading, this is not gonna settle in right away. So you can rewatch the video, um, you know, start to do some study on your own, become a member and, and get that training directly and actually see it live and, uh, and be able to participate live with us. 
um, and which will help you a lot more. Um, and you, it's okay just to, to join and sit on the sideline for a while. Um, also, the other thing that I, I didn't cover in here, which we do cover in our members, is you can paper trade. Um, most of the stockbrokers out there um, will let you have an account opened up and they'll give you, you know, maybe, you know, $100,000 of paper money. It's not real money. And you can trade the stock like it was your own money and see if you can grow that money or if the money disappears because you're not trading well. And it's so much better to start there. And I recommend any new trader before you put your own money in, use somebody else's paper money and see if you can be successful at it. And if you can, great. Then you know start to small do small investments, even if it's like one share, just to see if you're if you're doing well. And if you're doing well, then you can go up to ten shares, and then start to increase your amounts over time as you become more confident and more and more more profitable. Um, but definitely don't lose your 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 hard earned money um, if you're new to trading. Just learn the time, learn the techniques learn the strategies, find out what fits you as a trader, what works well for you, so that you find out what your favorite is and use that and not have to worry about, you know, the hundreds of them that are out there. Um, so, but we're going to cover three today. So let's get right into them. Uh, the first one's called breakout. Um, and so on a breakout, and this is JKS. Um, so uh, just as an example, so you can see here that, um, you know, looking back in April on the chart below, you can see that that the stock's just been flat, right? It's been flat forever. You know, trading between, you know, ten, fifteen dollars, maybe twenty dollars uh, for months. And what you're looking for in a breakout is you'll be looking at a chart, and all of a sudden you'll see on the chart that the volume, like the amount of people that are buying or selling the stock, is just like nothing as well. It's just totally flat. And all of a sudden you see this little spike in volume pick up. When you see the spike in volume, and then all of a sudden you see that it's gone to a new high, and you can see kind of where it's crossed over all the prior um, highs of the stock price um, as it kind of moves up. That's your indicator that, hey, the volumes come up, so more buyers are coming in. And so now they're all, all of a sudden they're becoming interested in the stock, and the price has gone up over than where it hasn't been in the past uh, for a long time. So um, that's typically your, your entry right in is to say, hey, let, I'm going to hop in this because it looks like people are buying. And you can see the JKS, you know, kind of broke out, you know, around above that $20 range and then just shot up very quickly um, up to almost $90 in a very short time uh, before it started to, to peak out. And so, uh, and typically after it peaks out, it's going to drop back down, usually about 50% um, as soon as it hits the top. Um, and so you want to make sure you're booking your profits, you know, take some of your profits out along the way um, so that you don't, don't leave it in there. And all of a sudden it comes all the way back down and then you're out all your profit. So then all of a sudden it's like you, you shouldn't have even done the trade because you, you lost it all. So make sure you book the profits, but this is called the breakout. And, uh, and it's a, it's one technique that, you know, some traders, that's all they do is breakouts. Others, you know, do multiple breaks, uh, multiple strategies. I do multiple strategies. I do whatever is working, um, but that's, I've been doing it for a long time. So I've been doing this over 20 years. So I, I kind of know, you know, what to look for, but this is a breakout. This is a great opportunity. If you're, if you're new to trading, you're just looking for, Hey, how do I keep myself safe on breakouts? Uh, you're a lot more safer a lot of times, but just make sure you're booking the profits because it can go up and it can come all the way back down and you can lose everything um, that you, you gained. So definitely lock in your profits, sell along the way. But breakout's a great, a great opportunity to, uh, you know, to find a stock and ride it up on momentum. Uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is crossover. So now this might get a little more confusing. Uh, this gets more into charting. I'm not gonna go into details on it here. Uh, if you wanna join our online group, um, we'll get into more detail on charting. But these are called um, moving average EMA, which is exponential. And then there's SMA, which is um, simple moving averages. But what it comes down to is, uh, is price. You know, what's the average price been in the last 13 days? What's the average price been in the last 30 days? Average price in the last 50 days and average price in the last 200 days. And so if you map these on a chart, you can see as the stock was going down that this 13 days drop below the last 30 days and below the last 50 days and last 200 days. And so as it comes down, it's going, the stock is also coming down. But then, you know, hopefully this will make sense to you. Once it hits the bottom and starts to come back up, 
you notice the lines start to go back up and cross back over the lines. And so once it crosses back over all the lines, then it's now in an upward trend again. And so you can see that once the 13 crossed below everything on a downward slope and hit the bottom and then started going back up and then stayed above all those lines, that it continued to go up in price, which that means that's where your profits are. And so you can see that as, it, as, as long as it stays up there, the, the price you know came from $130. Now you're back over $200. And then you can see that it came up and it hit the max peak of 230 and then started to come back down. Um, and so the reason the indicators help you or these lines is because the 13 started to come back down again. And what did it do? It crossed back below, which tells you the stock's about to head down. So that means you got to get out here so you can book that profit. So you lost a little profit up here if you waited for the lines to cross back over. Didn't know if that was the top or not. But at least the lines crossing back over says, hey, it's about to go down again. So I better get out and lock my profits. And if you got in at this line, this last crossover here, you know, you're know you close to you know $170. And if you get out here on this line up here, you know, you're at least around, you know, $210, $215. And so that's a pretty good profit. That's a pretty good profit, $40 on each share. Um, that's a really good profit on that stock. Um, and that's over, you know, a short period of time, you know, a few months. So, um, you know, this is the crossover. Um, this is where I get into talking more about, you know, what gives you confidence you're in the right trade. And when you see the lines have crossed over each other on an upward slope, you can be more confident and comfortable because you know as long as that line stays above the other lines um, that you're, that you're uh, in a good place. And even though it goes up and down and up and down, as long as that line's up there above this other line and the other lines, then you know that you're in a safe trade and that you made the right choice. So that's the crossover. It gets more into more details on the charting um, part of the process. Um, but if you understand it and know it and you have the lines on your chart, um, it'll help you to know when do I get in and when do I get out. And so this is a great way just to confirm that you're making the right trades. And if it's not, and it's crossing back under them and you're saying, hey, I, I'm, I want this to go up. You, you need to get out. The lines tell you to get out because uh, they're crossing over to, to the downside. Um, so, and as they cross the upside, then you say, hey, I'm getting in. It's cross all the lines. That means it's positive. I'm getting in and I'm going to write it up. So hopefully that uh, gives you um, an idea as far as at least how indicators can work. And, and I wasn't going into a lot of details on these and, and we do a lot more online, but at least gives you an idea of another technique that you can use uh, in trading stocks. Uh, the third one is called buy the dip. And so we saw this on a couple of the other charts and we talked about, you know, the stock, you know, goes up, but you know, it takes periodic uh, resting periods or, or dips. And so um, it, we can go back on the other chart if we want to, but this is just shows you that uh, this is Zoom, uh, ZM. And you can see, you know, it's on an upward slope, right? And, you know, going back again, the lines are above all the other lines on the 13 EMA. Um, but you can see that as it comes up, it comes up and hits the top and then it comes back down and rests. And as it comes back to rest, this would be a good opportunity to get in. And then it comes back up again, it comes back down to rest. And you get back in there as well, because you know it dipped. And, but it continues to go up over time. And so you can see along the way that there's a lot of opportunities. So if you just miss it and say, hey, you know, I wanted Zoom, but you know, it keeps going up and, uh, and I just barely saw it and I wanna get into it sometime because I think it's a great stock, great company. I think it's gonna continue going up. Well, then you might just, uh, you can take a chance and just get in and hope that it's not about to go down or you can kind of wait and find, wait till it's next resting period where it comes down, makes a little bit of a dip before it starts to go up again and then buy on that. And you can see as it comes to a dip, all the lines came back and started touching each other's. And then, and then the 13 went back above the other lines. And so that's, that's your confirmation that you're in the right trade and that's going the right direction. And so, um, you know, this is called buy the dip. Um, great strategy. It's a, a way to kind of get stocks on sale as they come down and just dip down a little bit. Just make sure though, that you're watching, you're watching the charts that you're following the action as far as the stock prices as it's going up and down and know that it's going to make a dip. But if you're using indicators, if you can understand them and you have these little lines on here to help you, um, it'll help you keep safer on a trade and make sure that you're going in the right direction on your trade. And then just make sure again, as stocks go up, as you can see here, 
the stocks can make a huge jump up and come back down. But you notice it didn't come across, the, it didn't cross the lines when it came back down and it continues to go up. But you may want to book a profit up here, you could have, um, you know, and then bought back down here at the bottom. Um, that would have been an option. Um, or you just stay on it. As long as it stays, the lines, it stays above the lines, you know that, uh, hey, you're, you're good. Even though it went up and came back down, you did have an opportunity to grab a little profit here. But if you didn't, um, you're still safe and, and it's moving in the right direction. Um, so that's just real, really quick. Three different techniques you can use. Um, you can go back and review those. Um, but this is, how you, this is how you profit the stock market. This is how you view what the stock market's doing and what the stocks are doing and the companies that you're interested in and when to get in and when to get out and when to book your profits. Uh, because at the end of the day, again, you, know, you do this because you want to uh, profit from uh, you know, your investments and your time and your effort and your hard-earned money. Uh, and so one of the things, you know, I'm going to review this again. I've hit it and I'm going to hit it over and over again. Uh, even online, um, if you're part of our membership, you're going to get hear it over and over again. Make sure that you're using stop loss limits. Protect what you invested in. Keep your money. Make sure that you, you're not losing profits uh, along the way as well. And so uh, make sure that you know when you're getting into a stock, you know, where you're comfortable getting out. And make sure that you don't wait too long. If it starts to go negative on you or the, the charts showing you a different direction is coming up, get out. It's okay. Um, there's always going to be another day to trade, uh, but there's not if you lose all your money. So just keep that in mind and, uh, and, and be safe in your trades. And the other thing is, uh, you know, just last point here um, down at the bottom here, uh, don't be greedy. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, I did is, you know, earlier on in my career and, you know, I, I fall into the, I fall into it every once in a while as well. I mean, because again, you're not, it doesn't matter how many years of experience, you know, having over 20 years, I still have losing trades, but at least I try to get out before I lose a lot of money um, so that I know I could trade again and I keep my profits. And so um, don't get greedy. You know, like we just showed on that chart, you know, if you miss a trade, uh, don't chase it. Don't like get in, just throw your money in without looking at and knowing where it's going. Um, make sure that you, and then make sure you're getting, taking profits along the way. Um, usually I have, you know, at least three exits out. So if I buy a stock and say it's at $10 and I think it's probably going to go up to $20, you know, I'll wait for it to go up a few dollars and I'll take some profit out and I'll, and I'll sell some of my shares and then I'll wait for it to go up, you know, maybe two thirds and I buy and then I sell some more of my shares. And yeah, could I just hold on that money all the way up? I could. But then you take a chance on losing not only your profits, but also you're gonna take a chance of losing your capital, um, especially if it turns the market turns on you. So having those stops in are really important. I'm gonna show you an example here of what that looks like in the next slide. So here you can see um, that we have a chart here, and this is the SPY. And you can see that on this chart, uh, there's a support line here that's built over time as the stocks uh, moved down and up um, in price uh, over a period of time. And you can see the, the months down here in the year. And so you can see that obviously the stock obviously climbs up, but you know, stock always seems to find a time where it's going to retrace as we talked about earlier. And uh, when it does that, if you have your stops in, uh, you, you're able to, to stop and lock in a lot of those profits instead of having, having your price drop down below, even possibly cleared down back where it was in 2019. Uh, if you have your stop in, it'll stop you out, take and uh, preserve your profits that you made along the way. And then you can wait for it to drop down. You can short it if you're familiar with shorting. If not, you just wait for it to drop down. And once it hits a bottom here, then it's going to eventually start to climb back up again. And you can see that it starts to climb back up and it hits that resistance line, which this is the time where you start to get a first breakout. And as it breaks out across this, which we call support, um, here's a good, the first buying opportunity. So if you miss it down here at the bottom, you know, don't worry about it. Um, there's other opportunities to get in. And so here would be your next opportunity where you can see that there was a consolidation of candles um, as it's trying to build up energy to go up. And as it does builds that energy up, all of a sudden you see it trace back, it goes back up again and hits this next support level, which is where it was at before, as far as from a price standpoint, before it dropped down. So here's kind of a consolidation again, 
where it's starting to build up. And so as soon as it breaks out over this line and holds, uh, this is your next buying opportunity. And that way, and then you just continue to write it up, obviously, uh, the price and make sure that you're just, you know, paying attention to it. Uh, this is a weekly base um, chart. So each of these candles represents a week. So you can kind of see what it's doing week by week. But definitely, if you start to see it drop again, like you did in this candle, you definitely want to get out. If you have your stops in and you're at work, you don't have to worry. It, it's going to stop you out for you. And so that's what's great about setting them in the system is you don't have to think about it. Uh, the system just takes care of it for you. Uh, so this is just something to consider um, is using that stop limit. If you're not using a stop limit and using a manual one or the one in your mind, just make sure you have that plan ahead of time. And it's really not a good practice. Um, I've had other investors who don't set stops or they think they're going to do a mental stop and they don't still don't have a game plan of when they're gonna stop out and they lose a lot of money. In fact, one of um, my prior students before he came on board uh, did that all the time. He said he did it multiple times and he even did it once when he was, after he went through the training and got trained on, he's like, okay, I already knew I wasn't supposed to do this and I did it again and I lost a lot of money and I didn't have to lose that money, but I didn't put my stop in. And then, uh, and then the next time it happened, uh, he's like, oh, I got stopped out. I lost a little bit of money, but man, I kept up most of my profit. And I'm so glad I'm using um, the, the stop limits. Um, it's so important to have a good trading plan and uh, preserve your capital and preserve your profits. Um, otherwise, you're starting over from scratch or if you lose it all, um, then you should have gotten the stock market anyway to begin with. Um, so we don't want you to lose your money. That's why you start with a paper account first um, and then also make sure that you're uh, using these stop limits along the way. And uh, the more you get familiar with them, the more that you use them, uh, the easier it'll, it'll come. So uh, that's your three steps to making more money, three patterns that we covered uh, for making profits. Uh, 30 minutes a day. So the first 30 minutes of the market is when we're, when we're trading and the last 30 minutes of the market if there's opportunities. Um, and then sometimes 30 minutes after the market if we're looking for uh, earnings or other things to trade. So there's lots of strategies, lots of things that we cover in our online training and our online community. So um, we definitely request our free book uh, the number one secret to stock trading. Um, you've watched this free training video. Feel free to watch it over and over again. Uh, and hopefully that'll help you in your trading. Uh, and then also uh, consider joining us, uh, our member live trading online, where we trade uh, every morning. And uh, hope, to, hope to see you there. And uh, let's begin making you some money.